morning. Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship today with us for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Today's liturgy is Divine Service 1, which is on page 151 in the front of our hymnals. We begin our service by singing our opening hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Holy merciful Lord. God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a cold ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together our intro. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Forget not the afflicted. The Lord is King forever and ever. The nation 
nations perish from his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, so that man who is of the earthly may strike their norm. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Arise, O Lord. O God, lift up your hand. Forget not the afflicted. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a youth, for to all whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his, his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I will show you still a more excellent way. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, as so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with the authority and the power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out in every place and the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, He departed and went into a desolate place, and the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God, and to other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be 
be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this morning's Gospel reading, we hear something kind of weird as Jesus drives out demons from those who are possessed. In verse 34, a demon said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And then also in verse 41, we're told that other demons said, You are the Son of God. I'm sure that many of you have thought about it or have even asked the question, why did Jesus tell them to be silent? Why didn't Jesus let them speak the truth about him? Wouldn't this help in his preaching about the good news? This question might get you to ask even further. Didn't the Apostle Peter say something similar? When Jesus asked his disciples who they say Jesus is, Peter, moved by the Holy Spirit, said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And yet, Jesus told Peter and all of his disciples not to tell anyone. Why? Why would Jesus want to keep this a secret? Think about what's being heard in these moments as Jesus is casting out demons and these confessions were being made. Actually, think about what's not being heard too. Another pastor once wrote, You and I both know 
that it's very easy to completely miss God's word and his peace simply because we get fixated on something or someone around us. Believe me, pastors are well aware of this phenomenon. We get distracted and lured away and wind up missing the most important part, which is exactly what the devil is pushing for. How often we play right into his hands like puppets on his evil strings. Just ask yourself how often you've walked out of church with the all-forgiving body and blood of Christ on your breath and the benediction blessing of unconditional peace and forgiveness still ringing in your ears. And yet all, all of this, you can't remember a thing because you've been focusing on where it is you're going to go eat afterwards, or how much work you still have to do, or lamenting over the fact that there's a voters meeting after the service, or you're worrying if you'll make it home in time for kickoff, or upset that someone cut in front of you and took the last apple fritter. This is exactly what the devil pushes for, and it's exactly what Christ was trying to avoid. Think about it. If you saw someone exercise a demon, and the demon was causing that person to convulse, do you think your full attention would be on who is driving out the demon? Do you think your full attention would be on what is being said? Oftentimes when people only partially hear something, they tend to fill in the gaps with what they seem to fit. Even though what the demon said was true, Jesus didn't want the people to misunderstand his purpose. Jesus was trying to avoid people associating Christ with earthly health and wealth prosperity. We know that this happens all too often. And we've seen it happen not only in our world recently, but also in Jesus' own day. We saw it in last week's gospel reading when Jesus was preaching in his own hometown of Nazareth. Jesus didn't do miracles there because in part the people could hardly believe that Jesus was preaching in the way that he was. And they wanted him to do what he did in other towns. They wanted him to be the fix-it guy. Think about that line of thought. If all that the Messiah is, is the fix-it guy, the message of Christ becomes one of, believe in this guy and great things will happen to you. You'll be healed of your ailments. He'll make sure you succeed in everything you do. What happens when someone is suddenly given a fatal medical diagnosis? What happens when someone's marriage falls apart? What happens to people who believe that line of thinking, who are devout Christians, who come to church every week and put offering into the plate? What happens when things don't happen the way that they expect? What happens to their faith? Sadly, when this happens, when the fallen world comes crashing down around them, many of them lose their faith. They may even completely reject Jesus altogether. We sometimes tend to act this way at times too. There's times that we don't act like humble Christians that we should be just accepting the gifts that God has given to us in our lives with joyful and thankful hearts. Instead, we sometimes act more like consumers or customers of a store's product, where we think that we're the ones who are always right and we're entitled to what we want. This is exactly what Jesus didn't want to happen. This is what Jesus didn't want associated with himself of his message and his ministry as Christ. 
The message that needs to be heard is the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That through his endless love for us, he willingly sacrificed himself on the cross in our place, paying the price for our sins so that we could be redeemed. So we could be made pure and holy and share in his own righteousness and everlasting life. Nothing is more important than that. There's another moment in Jesus' ministry where he encountered someone else who was possessed. In chapter 8 of Luke, There's a man who's controlled by demons. He was naked and so violent that he was once kept under guard and chained until he broke his shackles and ran out into the desert. And when Jesus came to him, he was living alone among the tombs. Jesus did for this man what he did for the others. He drove the demons out of him. So many were the demons that they called themselves legion. And so incredible was this experience that after the demons were exercised and went into pigs that ran off the cliff into the sea, the people of the town were frightened and slowly came out to find the man who was once seen as the most wretched and forsaken and feared creature, now at peace and clothed sitting at Jesus' feet. What Jesus did for that man, he does for you. In the midst of this world filled with sin, no matter what state you find yourself in, whether it's your highest of highs or your lowest of lows, Jesus comes to you. He takes your sin upon himself. So you can share in his victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And so that you too can be at peace. This is why Jesus came into the world. This is why Jesus told the demons to be silent. This message of truth, the message of forgiveness of sins and eternal life is the most important message of all. The message of the Messiah, the Christ. When you go home today, try to keep this in your minds. While the demons were to be silent, we are supposed to spread the good news. Share what Jesus has done for you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds and the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. our prayers this morning, after each petition that ends with, Lord in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious creator, your son commanded demons and they obeyed him. 
so that afflicted people were set free. Cast out the forces of darkness, both open and hidden in our world. Give courage, faith, peace, and relief to our brotherhood throughout the world who suffer for the sake of Christ and hold your children in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, your Son taught with authority. Those who called into his holy ministry use that authority to forgive sins, strengthen faith, and empower lives of good works, that people of this world would see your love in us. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive our sins, Lord, especially the false acts that cannot pass for real love. Enable us to reflect your love, which is patient and kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, and does not insist on its own way. Fill our lives with good works that truly care for others. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, give wisdom and courage to all who govern our communities and country, that they may lead well, following your will rather than man's whims. We also ask that you bless and protect our police officers, firefighters, disaster relief workers, medical personnel, and members of our armed forces, especially Valerie Hosteller and Hank Peening. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, forget not the afflicted, but hear their desires and strengthen their hearts. Grant healing to those who are suffering in body or mind, and comfort those who mourn. Hear us as we especially pray for Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, Lois Upton, Keith Burkhart's brother Ken, and Angela's relatives, Ron Stone and Wayne and Joanne Fike, and also for Shirley Fisher as she continues to mourn the passing of her mother. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offerings. pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. Again, good morning and welcome to all who are in worship today with us. I have just a couple announcements this morning. A reminder of the Valentine's dinner coming soon on Sunday, February 13th, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the dinner is your choice of pasta along with salad, breadsticks, and dessert. If you would like to donate any food items for the dinner, there is a sign-up sheet in the Narthex. Also, we have a few new publications ready for pickup in the Narthex as well. Uh, and also the church's uh, newsletter is available for pickup as well. Are there any announcements this morning that I may have missed? Yes, Ken. I'd just add that the newsletter has pictures in it now, so those that come from publications only looking at pictures, you'll enjoy this edition better. <laughs> <laughs> any other announcements this morning? If not, have a wonderful week in the Lord. <laughs>